Hey, what's up, Liron here. Today, I'm gonna to pose a question. We're not gonna answer it, but I will pose it. Uh, the question is, what makes a painting great? Now, I don't have a full answer to that, but I do wanna share something interesting. So today, I got absolutely obsessed with uh, painting this thing, um, just a bunch of uh, uh, vegetables and, and some fruit, I guess. Um, and I gave it a go. I, I When I say obsessed, I mean I did multiple attempts. I probably did five or six of them. Uh, let me show you real quick the reference photo. So here it is. And obviously, I chose to focus on this lower left section. So uh, here's the thing. I got real obsessed and I painted. So here are a few attempts. Uh, I'm going to go over them in a second, but you know, it, it annoyed me to no end that I just failed to capture the scene as I wanted it to look. That really bugged me and it was playing on my uh, the, the things I perceive as my weaknesses in painting. So I decided to dive deeper on that. Uh, we talked about it in the last live stream. Two main weaknesses for me are edges and colors. So not in terms of edges, you know, having a, a variety of them, but a lot of looseness where I choose to be, to have wet uh, looseness. Uh, and then in terms of colors, not necessarily matching, but having the harmony work overall. Uh, and this last attempt, um, and it's a small one, which is why it looks really blown up. Uh, it's a really small painting. Uh, this last attempt, it finally clicked. Um, now, I'm not even sure why, if you ask me, but let's look at some of the attempts. And I'm going to talk a bit about what irked me about them. Here's, uh, again, the reference photo. This is actually AI generated. That's how I found it on Pixabay. Same website I always use, and I wanted to paint it. After a few attempts, I saw the file name even is AI generated. But it doesn't really matter. It looks quite realistic. Um, so here are all uh, four of the five or six attempts I did. Uh, one of them is partial. So this is the first one I did, which... Actually, not bad. Uh, so here's the thing, and you can see my pointer. Yeah, good. Um, the first thing that jumped to me is that I failed to capture the the strong light on the left side. I completely lost the yellow there. Um, and then, same for the orange. I didn't get enough of it, so I went over it with a glaze that just does not look good at all. Same for the green, um, where you know I, I edited it back with some opaque paint. Uh, and it just annoyed me. So I'm looking at the colors and it's not working. Now the edges, funny enough, were decent, not great, but I actually like this connection here. I just would love to see the yellow more. Um, I love how this fades out. I love how this fades out, but it, I've completely failed to capture it the way I wanted to. And you know, sometimes when that happens, people get frustrated. I get sometimes more motivated to try again and again and again. Uh, so then I did this attempt. Uh, which is a little better in terms of colors. And you can guess I did the whole thing wet and almost the whole thing wet and wet. I pre-wet. And look at how you can tell this is opaque orange, by the way. Uh, but in any case, I, I wet the whole thing and then I painted the background and then I, I put in the the vegetables and um, the fruit and vegetables. And, and so you get all of these loose edges I ended up really disliking this. Couple of things, the background is way too purple. Uh, it's a little blue as well, but it looks purple compared to the yellow. That does not work for me. Uh, the edges, and you see I stopped midway. It was I was really frustrated by it. I again lost that vibrancy and fun over here on the yellow. And by the way, every attempt I try doing it a little differently, as you can tell. Um, and, and here is a glimpse into what may make a painting great. Uh, notice my complete obsession with the scene uh, in capturing it, uh, which led me to do multiple attempts to try different things. I did not um, go online and look for advice with my issues. I tried actually solving them on my own. Um, so here's another attempt. Again, I didn't like this one. So I was really frustrated with the yellow and I decided to try just the bell pepper just to see if I can capture the yellow. Now, I actually like the colors, but of course it's a very limited attempt. Uh, first off, this is way too like quick transition. So not enough thought about the wet and wet and the gradual transition, not enough thought about everything. Uh, really, I do like this a lot. This is the, the best uh, green that, I, that I've that i done for this stem. I actually, even in the best attempt, which we'll go back to in a second, it wasn't as good. Uh, and then the background, I like, I like that smooth transition. That I loosened it up after it was almost fully dry. Um, so at least I made a step towards it in terms of colors. Now, here's another attempt. This was, okay, so I was fully frustrated. You can tell this isn't watercolor, this is acrylics. Um, I just wanted to try matching the colors and see 
how much of it is watercolor's fault that I failed to get these bright oranges especially, but also the yellow. And lo and behold, it was much easier to mix with acrylics. Um, so that makes me think about, okay, it's not necessarily, and I don't like this, by the way, this is way too, of course, you only see the bright colors because I didn't get to the shadows because I, I hate acrylics, actually, I had to stop midway. Um, I was so bored of the process, so it just felt too much, too bright. And then I thought, okay, can I achieve a satisfactory brightness on the yellow and orange with watercolor? Uh, so then I did another attempt that I don't have a picture of here, um, where I attempted to work in patches, um, kind of like the video I did on Don't Mix uh, that I showed you. Um, that didn't work out well. I actually have no idea where that attempt is. All of them are flying around the studio. <laughs> um, but then I did this one. Now, um, a couple of things. Colors, to me, they're perfection here. All of them. I don't know exactly why, that's the thing. I don't know exactly why, but a couple of things I can mention is, first off, this yellow is bright enough. Now, this transition isn't, it's not close to the reference photo, but I still love it, I don't know why. So it's not really in the accuracy. At some point I realized, okay, I'm just not gonna try and recreate the colors to the T, but I am going to think about the colors. So the solution that I found, a temporary solution, if you will, was not to, um, match the colors because I find that I don't really enjoy that as well. The the attempt I did for matching the colors didn't go well. Um, it, because then I lose the flow and then I lose the speed and then I lose the freshness of it because of the time I spend doing it and I don't enjoy it as much. So, and I did actually have one attempt where I got some colors spot on, on the strawberry especially, I just didn't like them. So I was at a weird point where maybe the thing I was chasing and thinking I'm looking for, which is accurately matched colors, is just not the thing that I love. Um, so I did this attempt. And again, for this attempt, in terms of the colors, it all works perfectly to me. I really love them all. And uh, I would say especially how this isn't green. It's not really a green. It's kind of a, a muted yellow and 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 uh, blue and a bit of uh, actually uh, red. One thing I did here was almost avoid fully uh, using too much of uh, pyrrole scarlet because I find it it's very unreliable in how it dries and it led to a lot of trouble for me. So I used more of a quinacridone rose and warmed it up with yellows. I did use two yellows, lemon yellow and new gamboge. The new gamboge really played a role in getting this kind of color together with phthalo blue, not French ultramarine, because I did need a very vibrant blue, but a bit of a, a, a more um, dark or muted uh, yellow. New gamboge is still quite bright, can be, but, but again, uh, this is more of lemon yellow, this is more of a new gamboge in, a, in its lighter form. Uh, and here's again the reference photo, by the way, if you just want a reminder. At some point I figured I don't get the satisfaction from the painting by following it to the T, especially the colors. I completely removed this uh, blackberries here or whatever that is. Um, I get the satisfaction from something else. And uh, by the way, background, same thing. Those more of a spontaneous orange touches, I really like them. And then here it's a bit cooler. I, th I think th the colors are spot on. And the edges, oh, that's another thing. I love how they're a little loose here. They're a little loose here. They're very loose here around the edges. I love that red bleeding into the, the green. But you know, when I look at this and I ask myself, okay, how is it superior to all the others? Now, I can recognize that it's superior in terms of I captured the yellow better here. I captured the orange better here. The edges work better, the background, but it's almost like it's intangible. What? makes it look so good. It's almost as if nature or the world or the universe required me to go through this bizarre process of shedding a lot of things and just paint it once in a certain way of being. Um, Whenever I paint, I always get in the moment, so to speak. I really am in the zone, but something about this attempt captured me. Now, on one point, on one side of of, of this, it's a bit frustrating because I can tell. Let me go back to uh, this. On one side of it, this is a little frustrating because um, I don't have anything, again, that tangible. But on the other hand, I feel like... Um, the way everything connected again isn't necessarily something that can or should be recreated. 
Um, so it's more, the magic is more in the intangible. Um, now, it's funny because you may see this and, and not even, maybe you'll like a different attempt, right? It's very possible. That's just my personal taste, but that's the whole point, right? Um, the whole point is that is my taste. So I'm not coming out of this with too many insights. And, and by the way, I just stopped after this first attempt. Um, uh, wash or layer, right? I didn't add like the, the table, sorry, you're not seeing uh, the table, for example, down here could be a little darker, right? And then the highlights will mean more. There's a lot of things that can be added, another wash maybe on the bell pepper, but I stopped because it felt right. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, it's not even finished, but something in it, everything worked together. So if I go back to the question I posed at the start of the video, you know, what makes a painting great? Um, maybe it's not even so much in the in the result or in the tangible aspects of the result this edge is wrong this color is wrong maybe it's in how everything connects together now what makes everything connect together nicely right i'm going to leave that question for you to ponder um but it's a, it's an interesting uh i would say it's an interesting topic to think about um so and again, I told you the two main issues I'm going to work on are colors and edges, but now I'm starting to realize my issue with colors is not that I fail to match them. It's more about how do I achieve the harmony that I like and that looks good, in my opinion, right? And the issue with the edges is not that big as long as I'm not, um, as long as I'm not too caught up uh, in the colors and in the slowness of things. I actually get the edges quite nicely. Um, so, you know, these are my two cents. Uh, do with it as you will. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to experiment a lot with these ideas and see where it leads me. Hopefully I can uh, crack the code, so to speak. Um, uh, but we'll see about that. All I know is that I'm fully obsessed with making this work, making this look the way I want it to look. Um, so, yes, I will thank you so, so much for watching. One thing I will say, if you can do me a favor... If you're having a trouble troubles with watercolor, especially when it comes to looseness, um, be sure to check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course right here. Uh, it's a, a pinpoint solution to that. Um, it solves the issue of not being able to let the paint do its thing, which, which I think is a big part of what I've been trying to do with this painting. Let the paint do its thing in the right places. I make the choices and somehow channel the right choices for the colors for me. Uh, but after that, and especially when it comes to the flow and the edges, it's, it's to let the paint do its thing. Um, and a lot of the magic happens in the things that cannot be explained in a step-by-step -step process. Um, and, and this course isn't also, I would say, it's structured, but it's not really step-by-step. -step. It's more about looking at multiple concepts that lead to looser watercolors, if that's the thing you're into. So thank you so much if you're going to check it out. And let me know in a comment down below if you have uh, decided to purchase it based on this video. I would appreciate that feedback. Um, I also want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. I uh, really cannot thank you enough. Um, you enable me to do this amazing thing for a living. So thank you so, so much for that. I did mention there will be uh, soon a full painting process that's exclusive to there. Something a little special. It's in the making, okay? Uh, but with, with that, I will wrap it up. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you in the next video.